Hi there, in this video I will try to explain uh, what is phishing. So phishing consists in, um, so it's, uh, first of all, we are talking about security here and we are talking about hacking. So it consists of uh, malicious people who are gonna send you emails claiming that there are either someone or either an entity in order for you to act and do something um, on their, uh, let's say, on their website, on their platform, and they will use afterward uh, your information against you. So uh, those kind of attacks have more chances to uh, succeed if, let's say, they well study uh, their targets. Uh, most of the time, the phishing attacks that you are receiving within your mailbox are kind of mass attacks. So in fact, the hackers um, do not have databases which are uh, very powerful, which means that they probably just have your email. Uh, they probably know as well the service that you went for, such as, uh, for example, um, um, internet service subscription, such as um, an e-commerce website, that kind of thing, but they don't know exactly, um, let's say, your name or that kind of thing. Uh, but of course, if they have access to those given information, they can make an attack which is even, uh, even stronger. Uh, it has as well uh, more chances to, to succeed, or at least you have more chances uh, to be subject to those uh, threats if the attacks uh, make sense. Most of the time those attacks do not really make sense because they are talking about something which is too big to be true, such as $1 million and that kind of thing. Uh, in the scenario that I'm going to introduce you here is just, okay, I'm going to send a basic email to myself claiming that I'm a company uh, similar to, to Netflix. Uh, but let's, I'm just not using the name Netflix here in order to not have any issues with Netflix. So that's why um, I just name it uh, Netflix, but just to let you know that uh, of course attackers will use exactly the same name as the company. So let's imagine that um, I'm here representing a, a company named Netflix. So I got the information that um, this person is in fact a customer of this given company. So I'm sending an email to this person. And within this email, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to tailor uh, an offer. And this offer in my case is something which is about a five euro voucher. So it's not something which is that big, it's something which is realistic in order uh, to get what I need from the given user, which is in this case um, is, uh, is credential. So here, as you can see, I make a basic email. Uh, it's ugly. But just to let you know that uh, attackers, which are a little bit uh, smarter, will go uh, for uh, that kind of thing. I will, they will definitely have a look at uh, what the company they want to imitate is doing and will have exactly a template which look like this one with fonts which are very similar with the same color and so on and so forth. And in fact, um, the only way or at least one of the few ways that you can find that it's um, it's a fake, it's really by hovering your mouse over the link and see in fact which domain name it's going to send to you because this is definitely the part on which uh, they cannot really lie unless uh, they succeed to get an access to the website and then uh, doing a redirect. But uh, most of the time what's happening is that they don't have the possibility uh, to get the, the, the same domain name or they go for domain name which look like the same or even plays with subdomains which look like the same but which are not uh, the same. So by just by hovering your mouse over them, you can know on each time if it's a, it's a fake or not. You can also look at uh, who is the sender, but this um, information here can be in reality um, be based thanks to what we call spoofing, which is another attack that I will probably introduce uh, later on. But uh, just to let you know that this information in some cases may not be accurate, but if you are subject to spoofing, probably high chances that it end up within uh, your email. So that's the thing, right? An email is going to be sent and you're going to receive the email. So I'm going to send the email. Um, I have no idea how can I send it. So from to and then I send it by clicking on this one, I guess. Boom. Okay, so now the email is sent. So I'm getting my um, I'm getting my message. Uh, so I'm reading it. And it's, oh, okay. So it looks kind of normal because, um, well, the offer is is kind of attractive. It's not that much, but it's attractive. Uh, here you can over your mouse over it, and as you can see, it's redirecting me to localhost slash Netflix, which is of course not uh, Netflix or Netflix.com. So I know that it's uh, it's a fake here, but just to let you know once more that's hovering your mouse over this link will make you clear 
if it's a fake or not. Um, here, of course, the template, as I said, is, is ugly, but just to let you know that if you have the, the time or if the hacker has the time uh, to do it, uh, he or she probably do something similar to this. So uh, now let's click on the given link. So on the given link, uh, you are landing on the page that the hacker designed. So here is the one that I designed in really a couple of minutes. Uh, so just to let you know, it's, it's just about how much time the hacker is going to spend on the design of the website. But in order to make all of this, it's kind of easy for them. They just need to inspect uh, the source code, look at the font which have been used, uh, look at uh, the different color that the people are um, taking in order to design the Netflix website. And they will be able, uh, if they have more time, uh, so time that I don't have, in order to really customize the page and make it exactly like this one. So the only thing on which you can base uh, your assumption that it's uh, it's a fake is really by looking at, at the domain name. But let's imagine here that I'm a subject who did not look at uh, the domain name at all, right? So you have here the promise, which is connect to your Netflix account in order to get your five euro voucher. So it makes sense so as a given um, user. I'm going to enter my credential, which are, uh, let's imagine, so that's uh, Renan. And then as a password, I'm going to put something which is very secure because I'm uh, scared about security and stuff. So here is my password. Okay, so now I, I connect. Okay, here, um, if the, let's say the trap is well down, what they will tell you is, okay, uh, that's, uh, that's perfect. We'll contact you within the next 72 hours to get your voucher. Um, in fact, here during those 72 hours, this is where they will use your credential in order to arm either your reputation or your business or whatever. So here once more, let's imagine that this page is uh, well templated as well, uh, just to let you know that you cannot connect, in fact, to the real uh, Netflix, Netflix uh, company in any cases, because they don't have an access to the full database of Netflix or Netflix. Um, so that's that's the big point here. In any cases, the only way they can, let's say, trap you is just by promising you something such as oh, okay we got an issue it's not working right now or uh, to just to tell you to wait such as i'm doing here and in fact what happened here is just by giving your credential to a, a fake website in fact what they have from their side so this is the access to the to the database okay to the database they have um um a table uh, which is in my case here credential and i know that um, someone with the name ronan uh, so this is the identifier and gave me his password. So in fact, all the all what the hacker has to do right now is just to copy and paste those two information and cross his finger that uh, you did not change those credentials on, on Netflix, Netflix or in any other uh, huge and popular platform. Because most of the time what people are doing is that when they subscribe to a given service, for example, to purchase a pizza or yeah, to open a Netflix account or whatever, they all use the same password and the same username everywhere, at least the same email address. So as a result, um, as they just got your username and password, they will just try in all those popular websites, they will all try those combinations in order to find any open gates and then uh, either make purchases, uh, either steal personal information out of you in order to make a better trap and so on and so forth. So uh, they can go this way or either they can study what uh, you are doing on the internet. So thanks to uh, your uh, your credential, uh, they can maybe guess your first name and uh, family name if you are using those uh, first name and family name within your, your username. They can look at your social networks and know, for example, that thanks to your social network, uh, you are claiming, for example, that uh, you are a Netflix user because uh, you are just giving reviews about uh, movies or about TV series or any purchase you made on Amazon and so on and so forth. And they will know that you have accounts on Amazon and they will know that you have accounts on Netflix because you are talking about it on social networks. So they will use uh, your credential. So that's why uh, you need every service that you use on the internet to have actually a password which is different. Uh, you can have as well an identifier which is different and another security which is, which is really great is really the double uh, factor authenticator because it means that even if they get your identifier, even if they get their password, they won't get an access to your mobile device or any additional security you have and as a result uh, you are trapping them uh, including uh, 
uh, the potential account that they act on Netflix or Netflix. We hope that it helps uh, you understanding what is uh, what is fishing. Thanks for watching.